Sometimes you assemble plastic models and the pieces just don't fit right, whether that's because of warping or shrinkage of the plastic. Small gaps might disappear once you prime the model, but in particularly bad cases, something more drastic is required. Today, I'm going to be comparing sprue goo and green stuff and evaluate the pros and cons of each for filling gaps. That's right, it's time once again to pull out the sprue goo. In case you aren't familiar, sprue goo is something you make yourself using leftover sprue plastic that's been melted in acetone or a plastic cement such as Tammy Extra Thin, which then becomes gooey and pliable, hence the name sprue goo. So why even try sprue goo, which adds another layer of complexity to the process? Two reasons stand out to me. First, sprue goo melts the plastic it's applied to, at least a little bit. As it cures, the parts of the model are welded together, resulting in theoretically a stronger model, which can be important with particularly bad gaps. Second, it gives new life to plastic that otherwise might end up in a landfill, and I'm always in favor of reducing waste. You already have the extra plastic, why not put it to use? So now that we know the why, let's move on to the how. Though a quick word of caution, be aware that acetone is an irritant, so I do recommend wearing gloves and working in a well-ventilated space. Gloves, I recommend them. And for crying out loud, don't drink it. You know who you are. Come on, guy. Come on. As part of my demonstration today, I will be using this War Boss on a Squigasaur, as well as these Squig Hog Boys. First, we need to make the sprue goo. I have a video about my first experience with sprue goo and how to make it, link in the description down below. But in short, cut up a bunch of sprues, place them into a sealable glass jar, and add just enough acetone to submerge it. Wait 24 hours and you have sprue goo. Once we have a proper batch of sprue goo, we'll use metal sculpting tools such as these from Army Painter to apply small amounts of the sprue goo into the gaps, pressing it down firmly. Immediately, I'm noticing it's difficult to get small amounts of the sprue goo, and it's quite stringy. It's also difficult to get the goo exclusively into the gaps, and this sloppy application is going to ruin some of the model's details. We're gonna be able to clean some of this up, but we've got a lot of work in front of us. With the sprue goo applied, we have to give it some time to cure. This can take up to 24 hours, but for thin applications, it can be workable in as little as one. To clean up, I'm starting with the hobby knife, cutting away the obviously excess material. I also find it useful to use the flat side of the blade to scrape off rough patches in a way that won't see the blade accidentally catching the details we want to preserve. Next, we'll grab some files and get to work. I'm using these Citadel files as the round side is particularly useful when working in gaps like these, but they do get gunked up quite easily and require frequent cleaning. As I reveal more of the original model, I'll also spend some effort trying to clean up the details, but this step is taking far longer than I like. You'll also notice that sprue goo has become porous in areas where it was applied too thickly. That's the opposite of what we want. All right, I've got this in an okay spot, and I think trying to work it much more is going to start undoing the effort that's been made. So we're going to set it aside for now and move on to the green stuff. We'll wait until after priming to pass any judgment on the sprue goo. Working with the green stuff, we're first going to cut a small amount off the roll of material. Even this might be too much, but having a little excess will make it a little easier to work with. Now we work the yellow putty into the blue by stretching and pressing them together until we get a nice, even, consistent green color. Next, we'll take a small piece and roll it as thinly as we can without breaking it apart. Take a slither of the green stuff, put it into place, and press it into the gap with our tool. Now, the green stuff may be more inclined to stick to your tools than to the model. There are a couple of things you can do to mitigate this, such as rolling the tool over the green stuff, making small, quick applications of pressure over small areas, or applying water to your tools to act as a barrier. I'm sure you've already noticed that as I've been working the green stuff into these gaps, it's more precise and quicker to apply. In fact, in the time it took me to apply and clean the sprue goo to a single model, I was able to apply green stuff to four models. The Proof will be in the priming though. That's the green stuff applied. Once again, we're going to give this time to set as much as 24 hours if we want to play it safe, then prime it. But let's go ahead and jump straight ahead and take a close look at the primed models.
it's immediately apparent that the green stuff is performing better. Even though I skipped the cleaning of the green stuff after laying it set, it's still less obvious than the sprue goo. The sprue goo is also very rough. On this squigasaur, I think that actually kind of works out as it gives the appearance of scar tissue, but this will not be ideal if you want a smooth finish, unless that is, you're willing to put in the extra work. So let's recap what we've learned. Green stuff can be applied much more accurately than the sprue goo. Green stuff is safer to handle. Green stuff is quicker to prepare. Green stuff requires less cleanup after application. Sprue goo can be porous if applied too quickly, ruining the finish. Sprue goo can damage fine details, while green stuff can just be picked right off. Sprue goo fuses the parts it's applied to. Sprue goo recycles waste plastic. Now that was a lot of negatives for the sprue goo and only a couple of positives. I don't think that means sprue goo is entirely without merit. I think on flat or convex surfaces or where preservation of smoothness of detail are unimportant, it's still worth considering sprue goo. That said, I will be defaulting to green stuff for filling gaps in the future. If you found this video helpful, think about leaving a like as it really helps me out. If you wanna see these and numerous other B Snaga models get painted, think about getting subscribed and clicking that notification icon so that you don't miss my upcoming painting video. You can also find me on Instagram at tabletopackley where I post my work in progress photos. And for everything else, take a look at my Linktree profile, link down in the description below. If you're feeling generous, you can toss me a fiver over at buymeacoffee.com slash tabletopackley. Also, for the first time ever on my channel, I'd like to thank Hacko Mike for their generous donation. I really do appreciate it as it shows that what I'm doing is actually helping someone, or at a minimum, entertaining. That's it, I'm Tabletop Ackley. Thanks for hanging out with me today.